where he just kind of says, well, that's just how somebody is. And then you'll meet a person, you'll be like, ah, it's completely different than that, you know? So I don't know where so that the stuff comes from. And nobody really cares, you know? I know he doesn't care. But if you get to know him, I think you'll like him a lot. John, you know, yesterday really filled out a lot of the staff positions. I guess, how did you go about building that staff? And do you have any further comments about the guys that you chose to help you lead next year? Right. I'm really excited about the coaches that we hired. Um, you know, we had a lot of staff turnover. We had, a, we had a, we Mike go to be a head coach. We had Anthony and Denard move on to be coordinators. Uh, we had a lot of inquiries about other coaches, uh, head coaches and otherwise coordinators. And uh, so we had a lot of positions to fill. And I think we filled them with guys that are going to be great fits for us. They're going to make us even better. That's what you're trying to do. You try to hire, acquire the best players you can. Hire the best coaches you can. Just build the best team that you can. And then, you know, if it goes well, guys get an opportunity to go somewhere else and kind of, you know, chase their career in advance or players move on and sign for bigger contracts or they get a new contract with you. That's all good stuff. It's not stuff that you sit back and you lament and you say, well, how are they going to replace this guy or that guy? I mean, I think 16 years we've had that same refrain after every single season. And to me, it's a positive thing. So the guys coming in are going to be amazing. I mean, Dennis Johnson with the D-line from Baylor, you're going to see his energy and his fire, uh, his attention to detail guy. Doug Mallory's one of the greatest secondary coaches in the world right now. I mean, he fits us because he's been in a similar system for the last number of years. So he understands the way our system operates. Uh, that, that's going to be a huge plus for us. Uh, Mark DeLeon, a coach's kid, but when you start listening to him talk ball, he, he, just, he just blew me away with his knowledge and his, and his relationships with players and his relationship with Roquan. Just those three guys on defense. Um, offense, you know, we've done, we've done a little bit there. Uh, assistant offensive line with Travell Wharton coming in, former player. I just love the interview with him and his relationship with players and his background with John Matsko and then with Juan Castillo uh, makes him uniquely qualified to be with us. So just a lot of great coaches. John, 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 with, with, uh, with Mike. Mike Brown. Brown. Yeah, no, I'm just really excited about the guys we've got. I mean, every season is a new season, and that's just the way it works. You know, and I'm, uh, the guys that we have are guys that are going to fit in well, and, and uh, you know, we're not going to change our defensive structure. We, we elevated Zach, so that's continuity there with what we're doing on defense. And we've had continuity with our defensive coordinator hires since 2008. That's, that's been a, a trend, and I think we're the, we're the, we're the get up the least points uh, in the league since 2008 by far. So, you know, we've got a little, a little tradition going there. You know, we kind of have a pretty good feel for what we want to do on defense. We want to just keep building on that, evolving it, getting better with it. Zach's the next guy in line to lead that. And those other guys are going to do a great job. I've been hiring Chuck Smith last year. You know, how good was that for us? So all those kind of things are really a big plus, And I think it's just part and parcel of the way it goes. With, with Mike and Seattle, Jim and Jesse and Los Angeles, you have Sharon now. They're all trying to hire with a specific type of defense. How, how much does the competition increase for the coaches to have this institution? Right, Denard in Tennessee, uh, to add that, um, Anthony in Miami. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's a great question. You know, I think it's something that kind of happens in, in, in football, especially in the National Football League. It's definitely not something to be, you know, sad about. I mean, it's definitely a good problem to have. But like anything, like one of our beliefs is you got you have to keep things moving all the time. You're always moving. You're always changing. You're always evolving. You're always growing. You're always expanding what you do. Uh, because the people that you're going against, these guys down this row right here, are, are doing the same thing, and it's 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 a big, it's a high-level intellectual pursuit, to be honest with you. So that's what we're going to try to do again this year, and do the best we can with it. John, John, John you've been. Mike McDowell getting the I think Mike will do great. You know, Mike's great. Uh, a couple years ago, everybody was like, "Why Mike McDonald?" You know, so now I can go. Well, that's why. You know, you saw it. He's he's a great guy. He's a great coach. Uh, he's, 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 he's very diligent, you know. I mean, yes, he's, he's a smart, he's, he's, a, he's a thoughtful, uh, but he's fundamentally grounded. He's very diligent every single day. All he thinks about is ways to you know, help the guys be as good as they can be or attack the, the offense that he's, he's going against. And I do think he'll expand that into the role, you know, being a head coach. I think he'll take those, those qualities and uh, apply them to being a head coach and do a great job. John, I'll tell you the most with Tennessee. Yeah, Denard, Denard was really with us the one year, uh, came in and kind of fit right into with the system and, and, and learned it and added to it. You know, those two things that you always want when you bring coaches in. Uh, he's, a, he's a great communicator, great teacher, very demanding coach uh, in a really good way, you know, in a way that uh, I think guys respect. 
Uh, I'm sure he'll do a great job in Tennessee. John, you've been very... Working with Anthony Weaver the last three years. Yeah. What do you think he'll bring to Miami? Yeah, Anthony is a, Anthony's just a, an absolute uh, star. You know, I mean, I think you probably got to know him a little bit. Well, you know him really well, but uh, he's, uh, yeah, you see the, you see, you see him. I mean, he lights up a room, just, he's, he fills up a room too. Fills up a room and lights up a room, right? And then uh, the way he reacts, treats people, the way he responds to problems and uh, problem solving type of things, the way he coaches the guys, the way he presents, uh, his understanding of defense generally, but also is really good, I mean, high, high level, but also his leadership ability, you know, and the way he, manages players and coaches and works with the people. I just think he's a great leader. I think he'll do a great job, whatever he does. I've said it before, I mean, all these guys we're talking about are potential head coaches. John, having had some continuity and coaching staff and also having had some outside hires that you know, maybe made a splash at the time that it worked out, how do you feel in general just about the, the challenge of casting a wide net, knowing who's out there, knowing what the coaching pipeline is, and how easy or challenging is it as a head coach to kind of Big challenge, big challenge. You've got to be very conscientious about that. You've got to, you got to understand. It's not really like it's a small world, football, but it's a very sought after world. So there's a lot of people trying to get in. There's a lot of talented people out there that could really make a difference, and you just got to figure out who they are. I had a great conversation. I hope Coach Saban doesn't get mad at me for sharing this, but. Happened to talk to him about two weeks ago. And he was talking about all different things. And one of the things he talked about was all the coaching change he had over the last 10 years because of their success. I mean, coaches would come and be there a year or two, then they'd go get a head coaching job. Look at Sark, you know, and others. So uh, he just felt like the challenge of finding new coaches, hiring new coaches, especially as you get a little bit older. Like when you're young, you're 35, you kind of know who all the 35 year old coaches are. Now you get to be, you know, 60s or 70s in coach's case, you know. You probably know the 60 and 70 year old coaches are, but you don't know the 35 year old coaches as much. And then he had to train those guys every single year. I think that does become a big challenge of success. Nobody had it at a higher level than him, so that's that's a huge part of it. John, uh, John having gone to the league until now, how have you changed the way you evaluate quarterbacks, whether that's about a certain trade or your process of evaluating them? Oh, that's such a great question. How do you evaluate quarterbacks? I, I'll tell you, to me, it's like, and I think it's kind of the, just the way the game has gone. We've expanded our view of what a quarterback is. So it's most obvious with Lamar. Like, I think we obviously, would anybody say we made a bad decision when we drafted him back in 2018? But but at the time, there was a lot of people saying that. So I think the view has changed a lot in terms of how we how we view uh, athletes or people or whatever in terms of their roles. And it's just, a, it's, a, it's a, the, the game has changed because of that. In the last six years, the way quarterbacks play, I think if you go back and you look at football, it's 16, 15, 16, 17, or before that, it was pretty much a model for that position. That model has definitely, wouldn't you say, expanded tremendously. And to me, uh, I would like to say we were a little ahead of the curve on that, you know. But even even we're learning as we go and watch guys play and you watch watch all these guys play. I mean, the way Tua gets the ball out so fast, you know, how can we incorporate some of that stuff into our offense? It's just one example. John, your, your general manager is an avid reader. He told me he shares a lot of messages with the team. How present is that in the organization? How does that impact the players? Eric's an avid reader, and he shares those messages with the team. Yeah. Uh, he must do it one-on-one -on -one because I'm not getting the messages. I want, I want some messages. From, I see the books, but uh, I need to get some book, uh, book recommendations from Eric. Eric's a super uh, smart, thoughtful, deep-thinking kind of a person. And I think he's wide-read, yeah, on a lot of topics when he has time. He's probably a little more, you know, after the draft and before the draft, I would say, because I don't see him doing too much reading now. Not in his office. I see him on that tape a lot. So, uh, but uh, he's just been unbelievable. I mean, I think Eric is a great general manager, well-rounded, every aspect of it. He is involved with the players. He does a great job. He is involved with our discipline program. All those different kind of things, I think he's just really special in a lot of ways. Can you give us a glimpse into how you're approaching how or running backs? How important is running backs? Can you uh, give us a glimpse in how you're approaching the running back position with free agency, your guys, the draft? Up in the air. It's up in the air. You know, we don't have uh, we don't have uh, a lot of guys under contract right now. We've got Justice. Just love the way Justice played. He was incredible all year. Took another step. I think he's a great player. Uh, then after that, we just got to see him. We'd love to get Gus back. You know, JK's floating around out there. Just guys who've been with us. Uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. How important is the degree of friction or conflict in personnel decision making? How important is the degree of conflict in personnel? A degree. Of a degree. Sort uh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, if everybody, if you don't, I mean, if everybody agrees, then you're probably wrong, right? I mean, that's that's for sure. So, 
Uh, we, we have a lot of that, uh, but it's uh, respectful. Our, our draft room is, uh, is uh, you know, say what you think, but forever hold your peace, you know? And everybody says what they think. Nobody's ever holding their peace, and it's not peaceful. You know, it's not. But the conflict is good. Um, we try to, we try to uh, confront everything, every aspect of our football, of our evaluations, of our scheme, of our everything we do football ways. We try to confront it together to make it better. We're not confronting one another ever. We're confronting the issues. Let me say what you said about evaluating quarterbacks. How would you evaluate last year's class, especially the top two picks, the Panthers, Hawaii, oh. the Gap on how that went? How did below him? How would you say that went? You know, I don't know. I, I really wouldn't, to be honest with you, because it's just like it's not it's nothing that we really as a head coach of the Baltimore Ravens, I'm not really doing that. I'm not really evaluating the class per se. I know CJ Stroud was really tough to play against. We didn't get a chance to play against Carolina, so it's harder for me to say, but CJ Stroud, you know, I said it after the first game we played him in the opener. This team is going to win a lot of games. And uh, I'd like to remind everybody of that right now because they won a lot of games, right? So uh They've got a very talented team. I think. Uh, I think. I think their general manager is outstanding. I think their head coach is outstanding. Uh, they've got a great staff, and they've built a heck of a football team. But the quarterback is really important, right? And C.J. Stroud is a is a is a star. Is it too early to say that they missed the number one pick at all, or is it? I don't have any idea about that. I really don't even try to evaluate that. How much do you think the defense accelerated, particularly for you and Michigan over the last few years, because of the the trade of, you know, information going back and forth between the two programs. Did you see that continuing now that, you know, Jim is in Los Angeles and Michigan? Well, I think it's great. I mean, we try to, Jim and I share, like, a lot of conversations about a lot of things. You know, most of it's not football related, obviously, just like with your family. But a lot of it has been football related because, you know, he's been in Michigan. That's definitely going to be different like it was when he was in San Francisco. There's things we'll talk about, you know, and we're definitely going to continue to be brothers. You know, we're going to try to, you know, we're just going to be brothers. I mean, you have to you have to look at it that way. But we are going to be competitors, too, so it'll probably change a little bit. What do you think, do you think Michigan offered, though? I mean, Julie benefited, I guess, over the last Sure. Oh, yeah. I absolutely think that. Yeah, that, that, I think you're right, exactly right. Eric, on that last year, Tom, you talked about, you know, Todd Munkin and Lamar's fit. How would you say Lamar's fit with Munkin, you know, changed the year? How do you progress? Uh, just now, I think it progressed naturally. We're just beginning. We're just starting. We're one year into this thing. There's so many There's so many things that I feel like looking back on it now, we just, they actually were baby steps. They were hard steps for us to take because it's a, it was a sea change in terms of offensive philosophy, yet, they were baby steps looking back on them. We have so so far to go. Lamar's excited, Todd's excited, all the coaches. We have a plan. We came out the very first day after the AFC Championship game talking about where we were going to go offensively and had a staff, a staff meeting about it, met with Todd, met with all the coaches individually, met with Lamar a couple days after that, met with different players, and we have a direction right now where we want to go. We want to think we want to be tight, we want to be locked in, we want to understand how this offense applies to Lamar and our players. And we want to do right by our players. We want to do right by Lamar and build the best operation that we can for him so so his talents can really shine. And I think we're just starting with that. Aaron, no, what two makes, more, two no, more. What makes uh, young players like Zay Flowers, Keaton Mitchell, those guys so special? And, and who do you expect to take next steps this year as they continue to develop? Well, I think Rashad Bateman's going to take a big step just off the top of my head. You know, I think Rashad's going to get opportunities this year. He ran routes really well. He worked super hard. He was healthy for the first time. Even as the year went on, he got healthier. And you could see it in his play. Uh, the ball got to him when he did. He made some great plays. The ball's going to get to him a lot more next year. He's going to be ready to go. Uh, we got Nelson back. Nelson is a big signing back. He played a big role last year. Of course, Zay, it speaks, he speaks for himself. Uh, we got Ty in there. Ty did, did a good job. Uh, then you never know with a guy like Odell. I know that probably a question people are asking. I've got my fingers crossed. We'll see. That's kind of out there. Those are those things that kind of kind of answer themselves in time. I love our tight ends as receivers. So uh, all that is really part of it. Jeff, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, the draft can help a lot. Uh, certainly with the offensive line, Jeff. Uh, I guess it's a good. I just started watching it, so I, I, it's, so far so good, you know. And Eric tells me it's a good old line draft. Well, that's one thing. But the offensive line is where it starts. We talked about that in 2008. It's been true forever. You know, you went in the trenches first, right? So uh, we we think that we're offensive line centric in our philosophy, and uh, we've got some question marks in our offensive line. So there's going to be some rebuilding that's going to have to be done in there, and we, we're getting to it already. 
uh, it's going to be really probably the most important thing we do on offense. All right, thanks, Coach.